Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last Friday of 2017. Today, I thought we'd do something a little different for First 20. Instead of reviewing a new game, let's instead look back at every single game that was covered this year. I'll choose my top 10 or something like that. People still like those, right? Um, but first, let's lay some ground rules. I only want to review new games. New being anything in the last three years. So, if it was made before 2014, it's out. But, if the version I was reviewing was specifically a remastered version, it's back in. Okay, cool. That's like... 40-something to choose from? That seems fine. Now remember, these are my personal favorites. That means bias is ahoy. But you probably knew that, right? Alright, let's get on with it. Number 10, Snake Pass. I was initially drawn to Snake Pass because the composer was none other than the legendary David Wise, the man responsible for Donkey Kong Country's music. And while the music is incredible, what stuck with me was the truly unique gameplay. There has, simply put, never been a game that controls like this one. You play the role of Noodle the Snake, squirming and coiling your way through each level to collect gems. The team completely nailed the movement mechanic. It seriously feels like an actual snake. It's fun to slither around the world and experience something unlike anything you've played before. I should also note that there's a bit of a learning curve. As it turns out, controlling a snake, particularly climbing with a snake, is difficult. But it's extremely rewarding once you get a grip, literally, on the controls. This puzzle platform game is available on Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Number 9, Steve. Okay, so real talk, the most exercise I typically get in a day is walking to the kitchen and back again. So of course, there's literally no part of me that has ever been interested in snowboarding down a freaking mountain. But ever since I was a kid, I've been absolutely in love with extreme sports games. And Steve manages to scratch the same itch that SSX Tricky scratched a long, long time ago. It's an open world game that lets you explore at your own pace, but it also lets you fast travel to any point on the mountain and just drop in. Skiing and snowboarding are obvious, but you can also do wingsuit flying and paragliding, and everything controls really well. While you can treat the game as a competitive experience, since there's races and a trick system and things of that nature, for me, the true joy was just being completely carefree. Allowing me to fast travel all over the mountain and just ride? That was perfect. So if extreme sports sounds like a good relaxation experience, maybe give Steep a try on Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and coming in 2018 to Nintendo Switch. Number 8, A Hat in Time. After spending several years in development, this love letter to 3D platformers launched late this year. A Hat in Time aims to bring the glory days of GameCube era adventure titles to a modern audience, and I gotta say, it does a pretty fantastic job. I think the real beauty of the game is the bright, saturated levels and the wacky characters which would feel right at home in a Saturday morning cartoon. But the controls are actually really tight. There's a variety of moves to zoom around the levels, and it is legitimately fun to play. The collecting stereotype of 3D platformers is true, but it doesn't go overboard like Donkey Kong 64, and everything feels like it has a purpose. You're always working toward a new hat, which gives you new abilities, or earning money to unlock additional perks. If Banjo-Kazooie was your jam, you will probably fall in love with A Hat in Time. Available on Windows, Mac, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Number 7, Grim Fandango Remastered. Okay, so Grim Fandango is actually a 1998 title, but I reviewed the 2015 remaster, so it counts. If this game snuck past you 20 years ago, here's the quick version. LucasArts developed and published Grim Fandango with Tim Schafer as the project leader. You might know Schafer better as the founder of Double Fine Productions, designer of Psychonauts, Brutal Legend, and Broken Age. He's a funny guy who makes funny games, and Grim Fandango is downright hilarious. But what makes this title so memorable is the artistic design and the incredible world building. The protagonist, Manny, feels like a real person. The Land of the Dead feels like a real place, and it's believable within minutes. 
Grim Fandango has had a roller coaster history, winning countless awards and being cited as one of the greatest video games of all time, while simultaneously being a complete commercial failure and a huge factor of why LucasArts stopped developing adventure games. My advice? Listen to the critics, because Grim Fandango isn't one to miss. Plus, it's hard to escape. Available on Android, iOS, Linux, Windows, Mac, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita. Whew. Number 6! Whoopo! Ah yes, Whoopo. Or Whoopo, I still have no idea how to pronounce it. I hadn't even heard of Whoopo before playing it, but I fell in love with this sassy Metroidvania almost immediately, because it is just oozing with character. The humor, and to some degree the art style, is extremely reminiscent of Paper Mario, and I'd quickly recommend Whippo to fans of that series. The exploration part of the game focuses primarily on combat that's very fun to play, but you're going to be hurrying through those sections to find more NPCs to talk to because they are hilarious. Whippo was an unexpected treat and well worth your time if you've got a PC, PlayStation 4, or Xbox One. Number 5! The Long Dark. This game has been in early access for years, but the full release finally pushed me to play it, and I am so glad it did. If you've been looking for an in-depth survival exploration game, The Long Dark is it. The story mode is a great introduction to this astoundingly complex title, and it also tells a beautiful, sad tale through various flashbacks, but the meat and potatoes of the game is a sandbox mode where you try to survive as long as possible. And let me be clear, the developers considered everything. This game is thoughtful and very, very detailed. It'll take some time to get used to the mechanics, but it is so rewarding once you're actually surviving. I actually enjoyed The Long Dark so much that I released a bonus video in addition to my first 20, together totaling nearly two hours of footage. It's a game for a very specific audience, but it's guaranteed to be just what they were looking for. Available on Linux, Windows, Mac, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Number 4! West of Loathing! Okay, so it's probably no secret by this point that the way to my heart is often through humor. West of Loathing is that specific idea magnified. If you're looking to laugh your butt off in a hilarious Western-themed RPG, that's oddly specific, but look no further. Every single NPC has laugh-out-loud dialogue. But to be fair, all the text was written with humor in mind, from item descriptions to combat. Speaking of, don't expect the combat to get too deep. While it's a turn-based RPG, that mostly feels like an afterthought. It's fun, but it's ludicrously easy. Though, that in some ways adds to the comedy. If you like to laugh, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a funnier game that released in 2017. Play it on Linux, Mac, Windows, and, coming soon, to iOS. Number 3! Overcooked! I want to start by saying Overcooked is one of the best cooperative multiplayer games I've ever played, and the fun increases with each person added, up to four. Then, I'll give you a huge warning. It just might make you hate your friends. The premise is simple, cook some food. But as the orders come in and you delegate tasks to each other, the levels themselves start to work against you, forcing everyone to change those original tasks. Mao and I recorded the first 20 together without too many problems, but I've played it a few times since then with four players, and oh my god, it can be absolute hell when you don't work together. Plus, the people you're playing with can make it all the more stressful. Poor organization and planning caused shouting matches in our groups. So again, Overcooked is absolutely brilliant. But make sure you play with either some laid-back people, or at the very least plan each level carefully. You too can have anxiety attacks on Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Number 2. Sonic Mania! I'm sure many of you expected this to show up on the list. To be honest, I think Mal would have killed me if it hadn't. Sonic Mania is what Sonic the Hedgehog 4 should have been. It's every positive thing about the original games, analyzed, remixed, and then released as one perfect package of nostalgic awesomeness. 
Mal grew up with the Genesis and the Hedgehog titles, and her mouth was nearly to the floor throughout our entire first 20. It's easy to see that Sonic Mania was a labor of love, expertly selecting retro experiences while crafting completely new ones. This isn't just a love letter to Sonic fans, it's a work of art that any video game lover can appreciate. You gotta go fast on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows. Now, before we reveal the number one spot, here's a few honorable mentions. They didn't quite make the cut for top 10, but they do each have something to offer. Oxenfree! Oxenfree has a genuinely interesting narrative. It's a supernatural mystery game about some kids exploring an island, but about half an hour in, it cranks the creepy up to 11. If you like coming-of-age stories with beautiful art and dark undertones, you should really give Oxenfree a spin. One shot! Video games occasionally break the fourth wall, sure, but that's rarely the premise of the entire game. In one shot, the protagonist and you, the player, are actually separate characters. The developers describe this as, the world knows you exist, and it is a absolutely fascinating concept. Some of the gameplay mechanics they came up with actually sent goosebumps up my spine. If you're looking for a truly unique title, Nico could really use your help in one shot. Thumper! A rhythm game dripping with style, Thumper has been described as a rhythm violence game, and it's a pretty accurate description. You're a futuristic space beetle on rails, hitting notes in time with the music, but what really sets Thumper apart is its dark theme. The difficulty also ramps extremely well, and the levels have multiple checkpoints. So I was never frustrated with Thumper, only fascinated. Soma Spirits Rebalance! Developed largely by one person, Soma Spirits is a colorful, choice-driven RPG where you'll constantly flip back and forth between two worlds, one filled with color, the world of joy, and one without, the world of sorrow. The game itself is quirky and hilarious, but I actually really enjoyed the combat. See, depending on which world you're in, the abilities of your two protagonists actually change. The story paths are also flexible, and there's multiple endings. If you love wholesome indie titles, you should definitely try Soma Spirits. Quantum Break! If you're looking for a smart sci-fi blockbuster that plays out more like a TV show than a game, Quantum Break might be for you. What I appreciated was how well the story was crafted. Everything felt believable, and the game sections were legitimately fun to play. Oh, and I wasn't joking about the TV show thing. Later on, there's live-action cutscenes that correspond to decisions you've made in the game. Very, very cool. To the Moon Mobile! Okay, so I won't spend much time on this, but if you didn't know, To the Moon was remade from the ground up with new HD assets, and it was released on iOS and Android. If for some reason you still haven't played this 2011 classic, it is time. Seriously, the sequel just came out, so it's really, really time. And yes, for those asking, we'll be covering Finding Paradise next year. And now, for the number one game of 2017, where games of 2017 are games I did first 20s of that were made between 2014 and 2017, Discovering Colors Animals. What? What do you mean we got the envelope wrong? Okay, so, um, actually, the real number one is... What Remains of Edith Finch! I've played a lot of video games on First 20 over the years, but I don't know if I've ever had a game stick with me like Edith Finch did. I knew nothing about it going in, except that it had a perfect score on Steam. Now I know why. In the weeks since I covered it, I have found myself daydreaming about the 27 minutes that I played. Almost immediately after releasing the first 20, I announced that Mao and I would be covering the full game in 2018 because I absolutely had to know what happened next. It's whimsical, imaginative, and it left me feeling a sense of wonder that I haven't experienced from a game or story in a long time. Now, keep in mind, it's a walking simulator. I'm fully aware that'll turn some people off, but if you're intrigued by stories, What Remains of Edith Finch has plenty to offer. Also, it won Best Narrative of 2017, so that's probably worth noting. You can play it on Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. And that's it! My top 10 list of games played on First 20 this year. 
Again, remember this list reflects my personal opinions. I also felt like every game I played this year was enjoyable, even if I didn't mention it explicitly in this video. They all had something to offer. But how do you feel? Do you agree with my list? What's your top 10 from the first 20s I played this year? And more importantly, what's your top game of 2017? I'm going to assume Breath of the Wild tops many of your lists, but there were countless incredible titles this year. And finally, did you enjoy this video? It is a huge departure from what I normally do, but I thought it'd be a fun change up from the normal first 20 formula. So please let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for the first first 20 of 2018.